Welcome everyone. This is the session for <laughs> building your brand with CNCF. Uh, if you don't know who I am, or this is your first time on one of these things, then I'm Bill Mulligan and I'm a marketing manager at CNCF. And with me today is... Hello, um, my name is Sheila Sabi and I work at Comcast as an open source program manager focusing on community. Cool. And what we're gonna talk to you today is for all the people that are interested about uh, building their brand with CNCF, how you can go about doing that. And so we have an hour to do this and we have 44 slides and about 44 different programs to talk through. So hopefully we're gonna get through uh, all those programs, show you how to use every single one and answer all the questions that you have. So I guess let's jump right in. Um, so at a very high level, there's kind of like three things that CNCF provides. Um, so there's marketing amplification and brand awareness, there's cloud native community engagement, and there's thought leadership across technology trends. And we'll kind of walk through each of these buckets and the different programs that are encompassing in each bucket. Um, these slides will be in here, so I won't talk through them all now because we'll dive into each of them specifically. These are more for people that wanna have the uh, slides for afterwards. And you can see kind of what's in each bucket. Now, before we jump into all the programs, I'm going to uh, introduce you to a little company that I've created now. Um, and this is McMurdo Corporation. Um, they recently discovered that Kubernetes has been discovered in Antarctica. And it's really, you know, led to an explosion of interest in the penguin population there. And that's why we had the penguin jokes at the beginning. And McMurdo Corporation was founded to meet these new penguin needs. And they're looking to, as a member of CNCF, uh, build their brand and, you know, for this icy climate. And we're gonna kind of walk them through all the different programs that they can leverage within CNCF to help them do that. So first bucket that we have is marketing and brand awareness. So if you're not familiar, CNCF has a really great resource of all their different logos. Um, you can find them all online, uh, either on GitHub in the CNCF artwork repo, or also if you go to uh, branding.cncf.io, you can find all the logos there. Uh, so if you want to create uh, different things for your company um, to hand out, you can do that for free. Um, so for example, uh, this is our company website here. We can see welcome to uh, McMurdo Corp. And what we do is run Kubernetes for penguins. We have a couple different products and services. We have our uh, chief Kubernetes, Kubernetes penguin tux. Um, we have a couple different careers that we're hiring for and different benefits. But you know, one thing is I saw at CNC, at the, um, one of the attendee gifts for CNCF was actually the whole like 50, um, uh, characters as like Legos. So say now as a like employee benefit, I want to create 50 characters. Well, I could actually do that. And so let me actually just create a, a pull request for that. And so this is, I'm changing, adding my 50 benefits to my website right now. Let's see, I'm, I'm not very good. Um, person with coding. So let's see if this actually works. Um, so I merge this into my main branch. We'll like update our website here. And maybe it takes a second to come through or maybe something's cached. Let's see, because uh, I added the logos here and say you want to like use them. Okay, well, we'll come back to them. Obviously this is a <laughs> live presentation. So my first demo isn't working, but we'll come back to it and I'm sure it will. Um, and so if you want to provide like things like Kubernetes stickers or t-shirts or logos, like I know uh, Sheila, you're wearing some like cloud native stuff right now. Um, you can either go to the CNCF store and buy things there or you can create your own for non-commercial uses. So whether you want to go out and promote uh, anything in the cloud native ecosystem or have stickers to hand out at your next event or have around your company, you're totally welcome to either buy them or use them. The next thing is the CNCF landscape. And this has been described in 
a lot of different ways um, from the hellscape to very helpful to overwhelming. And it's meant to be an encompassing all exhaustive view of the cloud native ecosystem. And so anybody can go up and put their project or their product on the landscape and gain visibility into the whole like cloud native ecosystem. And, you know, I know Sheila, you um, added some things to the cloud native landscape and I'll show people how they can do it. Maybe you can talk through your experience adding things to the landscape. Absolutely. Thank you, Bill. Um, so I recently worked with CNCF to help two of our projects. Um, they're called Trickster and Cooper Healthy. Uh, get accepted into the CNCF sandbox, which we will cover later on in this um, in this presentation. Um, and I'll be providing basically feedback and real life experiences on some of the marketing aspects that Bill's covering and the cloud native aspect um, landscape was one of them. The landscape is vast and can sometimes be tricky or cloudy to navigate because there's so many projects to choose from. Um, the landscape map is, is, it was a great place for us to show um, our projects without actually being an accepted CNCF projects because we knew there's already an established community. There's already eyes on that, on that landscape map. Um, and so it was a good way for us to gauge and figure out if there's any community interest and if we were going to get contributors or folks to, to look at our projects once we got them into the, into the landscape. Um, so it kind of gave us a chance to gauge community interest and awareness for the projects. And I think um, getting them into the landscape was a pull request away. So um, that was really lovely. Yeah. And so I can show people how to do that pull request. So I actually made one for McMurdo Corporation. And it's actually pretty simple to do. Uh, so what I wanted to do was add our logo to the landscape. And you can see I'm adding it into the platform as a service. We have Open Swim. I'm adding the homepage URL, the repo URL, and the logo. And now if I go back to the actual like conversation here, um, I can see the deploy preview here on the landscape. And if I go down to the platform as a service, oops, then I can see we actually have the open swim card on the CNCF landscape. So this is just one pull request away and it provides more visibility to what you're doing in the cloud native ecosystem. Now, the next thing that we have is CNCF also has a really active social media presence um, and is engaged in a lot of different uh, uh, areas. And so our people in the cloud native ecosystem can actually leverage our social media channel. Now, the important thing to note here is it has to be vendor neutral and project impartial, and it needs to come from either a personal handle or from a CNCF project handle. But it's, this is also a pretty simple, um, e pretty easy service to use. So what you can do is I'll go to my personal Twitter account and I'll be like, hey, it's really cool to see cloud native penguins from McMurdo becoming a reality in the building your brand session um, with CNCF. And I can just tweet that. And this is from my personal handle. Now I can go here. Oops, I need to actually go not to myself. And then I can open that and then I can go over to Slack here in the social media channel. And then I can be like, uh, can someone uh, retweet this to promote the session, add a link to it. And there we go. That's how then the social media team will take over, they'll retweet it and I'll have increased visibility for the session and hopefully we'll have some more people joining. So that's the next great way to leverage CNCF to help spread the message that you're doing. So the next one is Cube Weekly. Uh, so this is a weekly email covering all the news, updates, and new ideas coming out of the cloud native ecosystem. There's currently around 15,000 subscribers and we have a great group of editors who are CNCF ambassadors who contribute and edit what's going into it. It's broken into the technical and the editorial section and anybody can contribute a, or suggest an article to Cube Weekly. And so this is also like pretty easy to do. So I can just Cube Weekly at cncf.io. 
Hello, Cube Weekly editors. I think the Cloud Native Glossary, which I just heard about um, in the business value sub uh, subcommittee like track and the recent Kubernetes on edge surveys would be a great fit for the Cube Weekly newsletter. And then I'll just send that to the editors and hopefully they'll go out next week to our 15,000 um, subscribers. So once again, really simple program and a way to reach a lot of people uh, with interesting content. Um, the next one is the Kubernetes and CNCF blog, which combined have about 300,000 views per month. Um, so Sheila, do you want to talk about your experiencing using these to help to grow the communities around uh, Trickster and Kuber Healthy? Absolutely. Um, so I'm a big fan of blogging because the content lives on the internet. So even if you don't have you know, a set number of readers at that exact moment that the blog post goes out, it, is, it does live on the internet. So that I think is a big, big uh, advantage. Um, so uh, what we did with Cooper Healthy and Trickster is, um, actually it was with Cooper Healthy, is we submitted a blog post to um, the Kubernetes blog once our Cooper Healthy 2.0 was released and we wanted the community to kind of know about it and we didn't know how to sort of inform everybody. Um, and so the Kubernetes blog was a huge, um, it was a huge help because we already knew again, similar to the landscape, um, they already have an audience, they already have an established community and that gets us more eyes to the projects. And it gets us, um, it gets us, helps us get closer to being accepted into the CNCF sandbox by building that community and having a set number of readers and folks who may be interested. And it also um, provides a way for folks to get in touch with the writer. Um, like the, the person who wrote like the Cooper Healthy blog from our side was actually one of the maintainers. And so you could easily just find her name, even if you're not in, in her GitHub or in the GitHub um, um, repo. And you could actually find who the maintainer is, just reach out directly if you have questions. So. I'm a big fan and it was something we used. I think it was um, also just a pull request away. So mostly um, I got help from our corporate comms through, um, of course, you know, we work for a corporation and we have to go through the right channels. Um, and, and other than that, once we got corporate comms um, acceptance, uh, we were able to, to publish it immediately um, through a pull request. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, the Kubernetes blog is, uh, as Sheila was saying, is through a pull request. Um, but the CNCF blog can either be through the member desk, which we'll talk about later, or just an email to um, blog at cncf.io. And so I actually want to submit a blog to the CNCF blog. Um, and it's pretty simple. Um, I don't even have to have the full thing written yet. Um, I'm going to talk about like, hey, we're going to be launching this thing called uh, cloud native TV. And do you think this is a good fit for the CNCF blog? Um, and really, this is just running it by them, seeing if they think it's a good fit for the program. And that's all that I need to do. And then, so I have this email written up, I have the rough outline. And then if Zoom puts the controls in the right place, then I can actually send it. <laughs> so there you go, like pretty simple way to really increase uh, the reach of your content once again. Beyond that, um, as members, there's a couple different online programs that Christy and Libby do a really great job of running. And the ones that I wanna talk about right now um, are, we, they have a live web, webinar option, an on-demand webinar option, uh, live stream, and the YouTube playlist submission. And so, this is actually a pretty easy like self-service process too. Um, and there's actually a Calendly link to go in and book this. And so I'm actually gonna show you how to submit like two different uh, things right now. So I'm gonna actually submit a YouTube playlist submission and a live stream. So the YouTube playlist submission, I think you can choose a date. So I could choose next Friday uh, there's different times that are available. I think next Friday at 9 a.m. would be good. Um, I can just like put in my name and then I can put in my email and then I can just link to the submission. And this is the daily recap from KubeCon. Um, this is actually streaming every single day at the end of the day uh, on Cloud Native TV. And then I can say CNCF and I 
am a platinum member of CNCF and then schedule the event. It's that simple. Now your uh, video is gonna be featured on the CNCF YouTube playlist. Uh, it's the exact same process if you wanna submit for other programs too. So now if I go back, instead of just submitting a vid video, say I want to do like a live stream, uh, there's no times next month. This is one of our super popular programs. We see that there's one available on June 30th at 445. I can confirm that. Um, same thing here. And now I'll actually just pull the information here. And so if McMurdo wants to talk about uh, instead of instead of having service meshes, they are really interested in phishing messages meshes for Kubernetes. Here I have a little abstract written up. The presenter is Tux. He's the chief Kubernetes penguin. Uh, I'll put in my email. Um, oops, Linux foundation.org and CF. And then I have a couple questions here about the program. And that's all you need to do. Um, uh, once again, Platinum member, happy to do that. Schedule event, done, that's it. And now I have uh, two video contents now coming to the whole CNCF audience. So another great program that we have here. Um, the next is the CNCF uh, tech radar. So these are put out quarterly by uh, the end user ecosystem. So these are all the people, these are all the companies that, um, use CNCF technologies, but don't sell any products around them. Um, so like Chile company Comcast, they don't, they use all these like things like Kubernetes, but they aren't like selling uh, Kubernetes service. And what this does is give people insight into what actually end users are adopting and what's actually being used in production. So the ones that have been covered so far are continuous delivery, observability, database and storage and secrets management. And it's pretty simple. Um, way to like suggest things. And so all that you need to do is to vote for future topics um, on this GitHub issue. So McMurdo would like, you know, um, like to talk about not service meshes, but phishing meshes. Um, and hopefully that'll be a topic for a future tech radar. And I think the tech radars are really cool because they give an insight into what is actually being used in the ecosystem. If you're a vendor and want to be featured in the tech radar or wondering why you haven't been, like one thing you might want to do, this is all information drawn from our end user community. We also have a referral program for end user supporters. And so anybody that refers it, uh, CNCF will donate five uh, virtual diversity scholarships in the name of the referring company. So if you know any end users that you think would be a good fit for the CNCF community or would be interested, or you'd like to have your um, customers featured uh, or for to have your products featured on the tech radar, then you should get them involved in the end user ecosystem. And then I see that there is oops, a couple things in the chat, but somehow my uh, my meeting controls have disappeared. So maybe I can just pause for a second and answer them. Uh, uh, Sheila, thanks for sharing the slides. Um, Kunal asked, can we write a blog on our experiences like in KubeCon? Yes, we love to have like people's perspective. I know previous mentees have written blogs. Uh, people, previous people that have been, have gotten the diversity scholarships have written about their experience going to KubeCon. So we'd love to have like actually people who've gone to the conference write about it. So if you want to talk about your experience attending this KubeCon, happy to have that blog too. Um, and for submitting the blog, you can just email blog at cncf.io. Uh, Christy, thanks for uh, messaging. Yeah, and uh, thanks for uh, answering that in the chat. Okay, um, the next part I think is also really cool is what we do is the uh, end user cloud native case studies. And this is a really great program talking about the actual adoption of these. And so we can see there's case studies covering all different types of challenges business are facing, different types of clouds, different countries, different industries and different projects. So uh, I actually live in Germany. 
So I can see that there's a couple different ones here. Uh, Adidas, Alpha Group, and Zalando. Zalando is a company or an internet company. And I can see, like dive into this. Um, I can see that there's some pretty cool graphics here. So they have 3000 production deployments per week. A team of nine runs 140 Kubernetes cluster. And they went from 10 minutes to, to 15 seconds. It's like pretty impressive. And so actually I have this talk um, coming up where I think these would be great to include. Um, so I'm giving this talk with Katie, who's our ecosystem advocate. And I actually need to add some uh, information here. And what's great about these is about these uh, case studies is they provide like really, you know, snackable things that are great to include into uh, different presentations as you need. So I think this is a great quote from Henning Jacobs. Uh, Kubernetes is a cornerstone of our seamless end-to-end -end developer experience. We're able to ship ideas to production using a single consistent declarative API. And there's the stats. And so I can just take this, I can drop this right into my slide deck here and then good to go. You know, there's so much content there that you can re-leverage for uh, different presentations or conversations. And, you know, this is actually what's happening in the real world. Zalando is a real company operating at serious scale. So it's cool to have this uh, resources in the ecosystem. Now, before we jump into community engagement, I just want to check the chat again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Chris, uh, where am I getting the, the sunshine if I'm in Germany today? So actually, I'm in Wisconsin right now, if like people can see my t-shirt. So I went over to the other side of the pond for a little bit to see my family, uh, since I haven't seen them in a little while. Um, yeah, so after that, I think we're going to jump into the cloud native community groups. And so... Chula, I know you've set up a couple of these and this is originally how you became an ambassador. Do you wanna talk about your experience um, running the cloud native community groups? Absolutely. Um, so I, uh, I was living in Philadelphia um, back in 2017 and I was looking and one of my, uh, one of my goals for work was to get more involved in the CNCF community because we have so much, uh, we, we use so much CNCF and we are building these open source tools that, you know, are compatible. So um, the first thing I did was look up events. I'm like, okay, I need to figure out where to go, what to do, uh, what projects I should look into or try to contribute back to. Um, and meetup.com was a great, it was a great tool for me to find out that there wasn't much going on in Philly. Um, and so I ac ac actually ended up spinning up um, the Philadelphia Prometheus user group and working closely with um, the Kubernetes Philly group and seeing, you know, where the gaps were and if we could work together and bring um, shared speakers. Um, and so that was a really good experience for me. Um, and also, I think CNCF also provided um, some swag and a little bit of budget. Um, you do have to do a little bit of work um, as far as, you know, trying to find speakers. And But I think uh, Bill's going to cover how to find speakers um, in, in the next few slides. Um, but overall, um, either spinning up your own meetup group or finding out where the community is. I know um, we just went through a pandemic and some of the in-person in events were on hold, but also virtually the events continued. Um, and so finding, I think, community days um, that are local to your area are a good way to build community, meet people. Um, you can also submit a talk that you want to share um, with the community. I think if you don't do KubeCon, you could also do meetups. You could also do Kubernetes community days. Um, if you have a solution or a use case or an open source project you want to talk about that's been working really well. Um, or even, I think we've even seen somebody do, um, just got back from KubeCon, here's, here are my five takeaways. Um, so Kunal, back to your point, um, you could even do you know, a presentation there once you get connected with your community. So there's all sorts of workshops, meetups, deep dives um, that you could find that, are, that would work for you. And this is a great resource to do so. Yeah, absolutely. And so the community platform is, a really good resource to find people around you who are interested in the same things. Um, so you can see I'm actually in Madison right now. So Madison's going to have their May meetup tomorrow. Um, so I think it's going to be, uh, I can check out that. And if I want to check out for like, say not when I'm in North America, but when I'm back in Europe, I can see there's a lot of communities all around Europe that I could get connected with no, no matter where I am. Um, 
I see there's a question in the chat. How can we cope with so many messages in the Slack channel and get involved at the same time? At the beginner, sometimes it feels really overwhelming. I think that's a, a great question. Um, so this presentation is meant to be an exhaustive list of everything that you can do. But the thing that I would focus on if you're just getting into the cloud native ecosystem and trying to build your brand is think about like, what, hey, what are what are my goals and what am I most interested in? You know, some people are interested in doing presentations and then they should look more at like the online programs. Some people are more interested in writing things. So they should look at the blog posts. Some people really like organizing like people to get together. So they should look at the community groups. So I would not try to do everything at once. I would try to pick just one thing and do it for a while. And I think once you get into the ecosystem, you'll really start expanding out into more opportunities, more options, and you'll get a better understanding. But don't try to boil the ocean, just pick one thing, start there, um, and make sure it aligns with your interests. You know, there's so many different things to do. Uh, you can find something that aligns with your interests. And if you try something out and you don't like it, it's totally okay to say like, hey, that wasn't the right fit for me. I'd like to do something else. You know, I, I, wrote, I wrote some blog posts for the CNCF blog, um, but I like organizing events better and you can totally jump over to doing that. So don't feel like if I do one thing, I'm stuck with it forever. And so, yeah, you can explore the cloud native community groups by the region. And a lot of these are organized by our awesome ambassadors. So Sheila, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience being an ambassador? Sure. Um, first of all, swag. Um, I will say I, I've been getting a lot of swag, which I'm really thankful for. Um, but being a cloud native ambassador has been um, it's actually been really nice for my career as well as for the community. Um, you become sort of a single point person along with actually there's a whole team of ambassadors all over the world. Um, but maybe for your company or your particular region, you are now representing um, CNCF. You're there to answer questions. I'm there to hold people's hands. I'm there to help folks get uh, acclimated to the community. Um, like Kanal, you asked the question about, you know, which Slack channels, uh, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Um, reaching out to one of your local ambassadors, um, you could even reach out to me and say, hey, these are my skills. This is what I want to work on. Um, I, I would probably be more than happy to find you um, an area that, uh, that, that needs help. And being an ambassador, it doesn't mean you know every single um, function or every single project within the cloud native landscape, because there are a lot, like we mentioned. Um, but it does mean that I can find you the resources that, that could help you connect the dots if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you want to learn about running a particular open source software that's within the CNCF landscape, we could totally help you get started and get you the tools that you need. So it's been great. And it's also been great, like I mentioned, like from the career side as well, um, because I'm the single point person from Comcast now that so people come to me with CNCF questions and our leadership team knows that. And it's something that I'm very proud of. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you've been a great resource to the community, like jumping on to conversations like this. Um, and as you can see from the map here, we have ambassadors all around the world. So there is probably someone around you. And if there's not, then you can become the ambassador for your region. I, I think it's great to have people in lots of different locations because CNCF is just, you know, a small team. And it's great to have these people that can help advocate us for us uh, all around the world. So uh, the other thing that ambassadors like sometimes do, but also the community does is organize our Kubernetes Community Day. And this program was actually just relaunched. Um, and so these are community organized events that gather like people from the cloud native ecosystem and help create and sustain local communities. So rather than these big cube cons with you know, 25,000 people and lots of things going on, I think KCDs are a really good place to get started. And this is also on our community platform and you can find one in your region. And so right now there's gonna be, the upcoming ones are in Bangalore, in Spain and in Washington, DC. Um, so those are the upcoming ones, but I know there, if we go back to the slide deck, there's I think about like 15 different ones planned right now. And so a lot of them are coming later. Uh, so there's probably one in your region that you can get involved in or go to. Um, so actually maybe I can just show people like a quick preview 
uh, of what actually KCD Africa looked like. Um, so this happened last week. I think it was really great. It was cool to see so many people from all across Africa, you know, get interested in cloud native. And I think it's going to spark a lot of discussions and community there. Um, and it's, it was a virtual event. They provided data sponsorship for people that needed access to the internet. Um, they had a great lineup of speakers and you could build out your own agenda. Like the community platform is really a full featured platform to help you build and create your own uh, community. So we have these tools as CNCF, like in available to anybody in the ecosystem that wants to help build the cloud native ecosystem. And we'd love to have you as a part of that journey. So if you're interested in KCDs, I actually run the program. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. And you can find actually all the information either uh, on KCD that's there or, um, or uh, on the community website or in the GitHub repo. Uh, another great way to do it is obviously to speak at KubeCon. There's 25,000 people here and the CFP for North America is still open. So you should submit your talk today. And now Sheila, I know you um, submitted both Trickster and Kuber Healthy and that helped grow the ecosystem for those. Do you want to talk about your experience with those? Absolutely. Um, so I think, um, so getting, so speaking at KubeCon is definitely a huge, um, it's a, it's a, it's no easy feat. Um, I think, uh, for both of our open source projects, I helped push our developers, a tech slash technologists to go and speak. And I told them that I would speak about, um, building commute, the building the community piece while they could speak about, um, the actual project itself. And so after getting them to agree, um, we did actually submit two talks into KubeCon. So we spoke at two separate KubeCons and, um, I, I personally, it's hard to gauge where exactly we built the community and when it happened because we were doing so many things in parallel like blogging and tweeting and speaking and going to meetups. Um, but speaking at KubeCon, I think was um, a solid way to, to, to gain community and build it because you see how, room the full, how full the room is. Um, and so I think both rooms were pretty full when we did our talks and then we were getting so many questions and it was also a good way to figure out um, who our users were like once um, once we were in that room and we finished the talk and the and folks were lined up to talk to us. Um, we found out there were so many enterprises using these projects and we had no idea. And then we found out, you know, how to reach our community, how to reach our users. And we would not have been able to do that sort of um, experience if, if it wasn't for speaking at KubeCon. So I think, um, I think it was a good sign. Um, once, I think once we just getting the talks uh, accepted was a good sign worth celebrating for us. We were like, wow, okay, people actually think this is interesting. Um, and then once we did the talks, we started gaining more momentum. And of course, once we got back from KubeCon is when we started seeing um, more users trickle in. And I think um, the sessions are also recorded. Um, so so that, that content continues to live on the internet and we continue to gain users from it. So I'm a big fan of this. It does seem challenging at first, um, but there are a lot of resources out there in the community as well on how, you know, how to submit a strong abstract, how to get your talk um, accepted. Um, so I think, I think it's, um, it's a great opportunity to, to get out there and speak. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as I said before, the CFP for KubeCon North America is still open, so please go and submit your talk today. Uh, as you heard, it's a great way to kick off your uh, ecosystem around your project. Um, and so kind of across like all these different programs. So if you've spoken at KubeCon, uh, I think you'd be a great fit for the Community Speakers Bureau, or if you're looking for speakers for your meetup or for your event, this is also another great resource to find a speaker. And in the Speakers Bureau, you can once again look for people with different affiliations, areas of expertise, the projects they like, the languages, or the countries. Um, and it's pretty simple to do it. Um, and the other thing is, if you have spoken at events before, please sign up as a speaker, as somebody who wants to be a part of our cloud native ecosystem and talk about uh, the ecosystem and promote it. And so this is a pretty simple form to fill out. So you have the username, the first name, last name, job title, job company, email address, password. And 
that's pretty much it. And it provides you good exposure to different speaking opportunities uh, across the ecosystem. Next thing is uh, a lot of people uh, through speaking opportunities, uh, gain access to new job opportunities, help accelerate uh, their career. And if you are looking for a new job, we also have a job board where you can both as a CNCF member post jobs or look for jobs too. Um, so we have a whole bunch of postings on here. If you're looking for something, please feel free to browse through it. If you're a company, you can post your jobs here and like people across the ecosystem will go here to look for their next job. And the last thing, if you're a student and still looking for your first job, we also have a mentoring program. I, I know last year we mentored 71 different people across all of our different projects. Um, and I think this year we're shooting for 100. So if you're just looking for your first job and looking to get into the ecosystem, um, then this is a great way to get paid to gain some of that experience. So now before I jump into this next section, I'm just going to check through the chat really quick. Um, so is KCDs for employees or can students participate in them? So students can also participate in KCDs. So it's open to anyone that wants to do you go. Um, most of the virtual ones are free right now. So it's a great way to access um, more events and more content and get hooked into your local community even for free. Um, yeah, hoping that North America happens in person. I also hope that I think everybody is a fan of KubeCon happening in person again, because it is such a great experience. Now, um, the next part that I want to jump into is the thought leadership part and how we can help there. So the first one is if you're on the like the business side, like say sales or marketing of your company, I Cloud Native is also for you. You can also become a contributor. And one really important way that just got kicked off is contributing to the Cloud Native glossary. And so this was an initiative that was just launched um, to provide a common, you know, like plain and simple term definition um, uh, of, around, of words around the Cloud Native ecosystem. And so this is a great initiative put together by the community and it can be seen as a resource for if you're trying to explain what a API gateway is to someone on the business side, or if you wanna contribute your knowledge to the community, um, but you don't code because I don't code either, but I still consider myself a contributor to the cloud native ecosystem. This is a great place to jump into. Um, I really encourage you to check out like all these definitions. I know a lot of great work went into this and they're building out more things like they're looking at personas right now and adding more definitions. So it's another great way to kind of jump in, get your feet wet and help um, grow the community. Um, the next part is CNCF offers a range of different free trainings. And so you can find them both on the edX platform and those are all of our free trainings um, then there's also the actual Linux Foundation training where they have the official training and certifications. Um, and there's a lot of great stories about people getting their certified Kubernetes administrator or certified Kubernetes application developer and being able to land jobs um, through that. And so if you're looking to upskill, learn new things or prepare for your next job role, the certifications are a great way to build your brand in the cloud native ecosystem too. Uh, on the other side, if you're a company and you want to show that you're conformant with the ecosystem, we do have a certified Kubernetes conformance program. This helps us understand that all of our vendors are running a consistent platform. And as end users move from one platform to another or migrate workloads, they're able to have a consistent Kubernetes experience. Also just recently announced is the intent to form a Prometheus uh, conformance program too. Um, and so look for standardization in the Prometheus ecosystem too. Um, another thing is the Kubernetes certified service providers. So if you have three or more engineers who have passed the CKA exam and you have a way to support enterprise users, you can become a uh, CKSP. And what this allows you to do is to put the branding on your website. You get 
placement on the first tab of Kubernetes partners, and that can lead to a lot of lead generation for your company too. And currently there are over 195 Kubernetes certified service providers um, in a similar way for companies that are looking for training and certification, you can become a Kubernetes training partner. And this is similar to the KCSP, but just focus on training. Uh, once again, you get placement and you can resell the CNCF exams. And currently there are over 50 uh, KTPs too. So these are a great way to show uh, companies that you're going to that you actually do have experience and knowledge in the cloud native ecosystem. And the last one I want to hand over to Sheila. She talked about her two projects, Kuber Healthy and Trickster. They recently got accepted into the sandbox. And uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that program and what your experience was like. Sure. So yeah, you may have heard me talk about the sandbox a few times. Um, so the CNCF projects that are accepted into the ecosystem have different maturity levels. Um, there's sandbox, there's incubating, and graduating, uh, graduated. Um, the sandbox is the first entry point for projects accepted into the ecosystem. So, um, so our experience was, uh, so we had to build some community prior. We can't, we couldn't just uh, uh, submit the projects right out of the box because there are some requirements. Um, but um, by using the different marketing strategies we talked about, like writing blog posts, getting into the CNCF landscapes, speaking at KubeCon, we were able to build community, get stars, get forks for the project, which were some, you know, some of the requirements, um, identify who our users are and get on the path for sandbox acceptance. Um, getting into the sandbox and accepted by CNCF um, provides a neutral home for these projects, um, along with some other benefits that, um, that we don't have to really dive too deep into, um, but some of them being, um, you know, you get featured on the CNCF sandbox page, you're now associated with the CNCF brand and sort of makes your projects more validated and, um, uh, you know, ready for, for rollout. Um, so projects can apply to join the sandbox. Um, it's a Google form that you submit and it can actually be found on the CNCF um, slash TOC GitHub page, which I realize is not on the slide. So I will actually put it here um, in the chat in case um, and also add it to the notes. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty straightforward process. Um, uh, every few weeks, the, the uh, technical oversight committee gets together and they review the different projects that are submitted through this Google Doc. And um, if the projects meet the requirements, you are accepted and um, you get a notification. I think um, a GitHub issue was opened under the uh, CNCF um, GitHub uh, repo. And it was basically an issue of uh, onboarding checklist of, I think there were like 18 items that we're still actually powering through. Um, but so far it's been pretty straightforward. The checklist has been super helpful and we're hoping that now we'll have even more uh, folks that want to use these projects be able to use them now that it's officially in the sandbox. Yeah, that's awesome. And if you're interested in donating it, um, you can find more information on the TOC repo and CNCF does provide a lot of services to the CNCF to the projects um, that it hosts too. Um, in terms of member resources on top of that we do have a cncf member desk um, if you need help with like hey can i join a mailing list i need to update my contacts how can i access um, different services the member desk is your place to go for that um, and there's some information here and i guess yeah uh to close out just uh the community is always hiring there are many different ways to get involved and we would love to have you get involved in the marketing aspect and building your brand with cncf so please um feel free to reach us anytime we're always happy to chat so thank you and then i guess we'll go into the questions now um uh if i can go back so there's a question, is Kubernetes something that we can learn on the go while contributing to projects or should we have some prerequisite knowledge of that for contributing? Uh, so Kubernetes is a massive project. There's many different ways to get involved and you don't need to have any prior experience before you can start contributing. I can actually tell you my first experience contributing to the Kubernetes project uh, was just 
uh, fixing a broken link in the documentation. And that didn't require any prior knowledge. It's just, uh, you know, like wanting to improve the community. And then you can uh, grow from there. Uh, can I sh show slide 34 again? I would be happy to. Um, so this is the training. Um, one, um, I assume the word enrollments doesn't equal to pass a cert. Um, I'm curious how many of the 37 enrollees has passed the CKA. Uh, I don't have the exact number off the top of my head. I wanna say, I wanna say somewhere around like 24,000, but I could be completely off. Please don't quote me on that. Um, CNCF does have official numbers that are like listed in the marketing committee deck uh, every month. Um, but it is a significant amount. Also, not everybody that enrolls is gonna pass. Some people takes multiple tries, like you do have multiple attempts uh, when you sign up for the CKA. Um, so we want it to be something that people actually have to like work for and achieve so that when we say somebody is a certified Kubernetes administrator, it actually means something too. Um, yeah, thanks then adding the link to the TOC. Um, yeah, I guess. There's a bunch of links in here that once again, the, the presentation has been like linked in the chat. You can also find it on Sketch. Um, so if you have any other questions, we're happy to answer them now. Um, yeah. Uh, what about CKS? Any data on the adoption enrollment numbers? Come to the marketing committee meeting. Uh, I wanna say it's like, 1,300, so in terms of people that have enrolled and people that have passed, but it's, yeah, it's somewhere around there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I guess uh, that's all we have for today. Um, I think Indra can't mention the link to the slides is not working. Uh... Okay, let me just post them again in the chat. Uh, and then I can also link to it in this schedule too. So one second. Um, Uh, so the link to sketch is right here and you can find the PDF um, there and here's the actual presentation. So yeah, um, thanks everyone for attending. I guess if there's no more questions, we can close for today. Um, and, Thanks once again, Sheila, for co-presenting with me. It's super fun to collaborate with you on this. And yeah. Yep, same with you. And uh, I, I appreciate everybody for coming. And uh, we're here on Twitter, um, email. Re feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions. And we hope to see you all in the community. Yeah, thanks everyone. See ya, bye. All right, thanks, bye.